So with the insight into H provided earlier, what H is, what H should depend on, what parameters should be in its formula and so on, this section will finally just provide some of the equations for H. But before that, every time we need to at least get an idea what type of flow are we talking about and what that flow might look like. Now H depends on the type of flow. Now we, we can expect that the flow over a flat plate is going to be different from flow around the cylinder or flow around the sphere. It's so geometry matters in uh, in flow and therefore it matters in age. Now, so we'll talk about these three geometries, but for each geometry, we will also talk about natural convection and force convection, two very different types of convection. And then again, for each one, we will talk about laminar versus uh, turbulent conditions. Maybe we, we may not get to each one of them, but we need to be careful when we are finding formula whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. And then again, H varies with position, as we already said. So then there is a local H or there's an average H over the entire distance or surface we also need to be careful about those. So we're going to do this many different cases in this section. First, we consider forced convection over a flat plate. So this is a flat plate and there's flow over it. So we'll not only consider forced convection, we will also look at two different conditions, laminar and turbulent, and we would also talk about local versus average value. It is this flow over flat plate that we have been talking um, so far at, at times in the other sections, but now we will have the actual equations for these conditions. But before that, it does not hurt to see what we mean by flow over a flat plate. So the following slide shows our own visualization. For this very class, uh, we developed these using bubbles that are neutrally buoyant. Neutrally buoyant means the bubbles are neither heavier nor lighter than air, so they simply move with the flow. Using such bubbles, we can visualize flow so you're going to see forced convection over a flat plate. There's no narration uh, in the video because that, that wasn't uh, possible in the way we uh, recorded these. Uh, so just watch the video. Toward the end of the video, it will change from forced to natural, but most of it is forced convection.
So what you saw was forced flow. A fan was blowing the air over the heated uh, plate. Uh, by the way, you don't expect to see boundary layer in this kind of a, a um, uh, flow visualization that you saw because uh, the boundary layer is very thin in millimeters so the the resolution that you saw there's no way you would see any kind of uh, boundary layer effect if you were wondering so for such force flow over a flat plate we can have two different situations laminar and turbulent now notice the interesting part that if you recall we were expecting to find uh, from the analysis of flow and heat transfer equations we were expecting to find h equation of the form like this h is a function of uh, just a second h is a function of x Reynolds x distance along the flow this is the x and Reynolds number and parental number and sure enough the equation that we see like this guy or this guy that is indeed the case it has Reynolds number and parental now it has the this is Reynolds number and parental number in them now we can expand this equation so that we understand the formulas completely. Okay, so let's do that. So this one, if I rewrite, nux, Nusselt number, is h times x over k of the fluid is equal to 0.332 and Reynolds number is u infinity rho x over mu raised to the power half and parental number mu cp over k all of these are for fluid and here viscosity is of course for the fluid and density is for the fluid okay and this raised to the power one third so the point i want to make is we finally have a formula for h where we simply plug in all the values and we get h it is that simple but the trouble is we don't want to have just a collection of formula before we actually knew what is uh, what are different types of flow and what is the meaning of h where does h come comes from where does h come from uh, so the other interesting part in this is if you uh, rewrite this equation there is an x here and and then there is also an x here so if you put all the x's on this side so h equal to some whole bunch of other things times x raised to the power minus half so in other words h varies as x raised to minus half in it for this equation so if i plot if i plot on this axis x and if i plot h along here then h is when x equal to zero h goes very high and then as x increases h decreases so let me use a thicker pen and so h kind of varies like that so at a at each location i have a different age 
So now think of if I want to use the heat transfer equation Q equal to H area times T surface minus T infinity. Okay, this is for the entire plate, the entire uh, region. This is over the entire region. Okay. And so, how can you use this varying age here? You cannot. You have to use average age. So, then average age, so, so this is really H average over this L. So, H average is going to be integral H dx over 0 to L and then 0 to L. So in other words, integral H dx 0 to L over L. So since I have an equation for H as a function of X, if I plug that in here, I can get H average over this length L. So this H average is written as H L. That's why you have a second equation here for laminar. Notice that instead of X, it has L. It is not X equal to L because then you, you will get the same coefficient. Here the coefficient is different because as you plug in h here and then you simplify then you get this equation so this is the one for average h and this is the one that we would need to use in a situation like this otherwise you have to get sort of flux at every location and then add them up that will also give you the same so if this q is q total then this h has to be h average okay so back to the other set of equations so just like laminar there's also a turbulent flow for which we have a different equation okay so for flow over a, a flat plate these can be analytically derived but for many other situations they really come from experiment and uh, but, but the important thing is they have this dependency on reynolds number and prandtl number and um, a, as we expected so again just to recap that we really need to know what type of a flow it is and whether we need a point value or, a, or an average even for forced convection and the flat plate geometry and so on we need to keep track of all of these so as we said h it really characterizes a bunch of different things the type of flow and the fluid properties and so on so you need to consider all of them this way another thing is you notice that the laminar flow equation it is valid for this range of reynolds number so anytime we have one of these equations there is a range of validity that we need to be extra careful when these equations were derived either from theory or from experiment these restrictions were put in so then the equations are not valid outside of that range 